established uh, by the Foundation of the American Institute of Conservation to help artists affected by Sandy uh, who can't afford conservation. They're a group of volunteer conservators um, who are coordinated by uh, Cindy Albertson, who's a paintings conservator at MoMA. My background is in objects conservation. After I left college, I went directly to the Metropolitan Museum and uh, I did conservation there for a while and then I ended up running the objects conservation department. The conservators came from all over. I would contact Cindy and we would um, schedule a paintings conservator to meet with them. So they'd bring in their pieces, meet with the conservator. The conservator could evaluate what they had done um, and what could be done here, which was very, very much about stabilization. And then also give them an evaluation for future conser conservation if they decided to go that route. Unfortunately, after Sandy, most of the volunteers told everybody to throw everything away because of the mold, not realizing that there was, there's actually something that you can do about it. Conservation can't fix everything, but it can fix a lot of things. There's a lot of, you know, very um, intricate conservation that you need a trained conservator to do, but there's also a lot of things that you can do that's very simple, erasing, um, dusting, vacuuming that you can do yourself um, so that it's not that to at least stabilize the pieces so that you know if you decide to go to a conservator in the future you're already well ahead of what that conservator has to see. There are places that artists can go to get you know maybe an evaluation or at least help. There is the AIC hotline, which is very useful. It's manned by an AIC conservator, but just also as an evaluation. They can go to the AIC website and there are lists of conservators in their area, but definitely um, the AIC hotline is, I would say, the way to go um, if you don't want to have to pay for an evaluation. You kind of have to prioritize. Look at your, you have 100 paintings. Pick out 20 that are the most important to you. And maybe if you can save the next 20, great. Maybe you can save everything. Maybe you pick out your favorite from each time that you've, you know, each time you switched um, how you painted. When something happens to your artwork, it's very difficult to not to be emotional about it. And that makes absolutely complete sense. Um, but I think what the artists that I saw that best dealt with what was going on were the artists that dealt with it. You need to not blame yourself for what happened, and, but also be practical. And that's very difficult. But the sooner you can be practical, the better off you be. Whether it's, you know, looking at the art and starting to evaluate it, or um, saying, evaluating it and saying, you know what, I actually like it better this way. You know, a lot of people said it's part of the history of the piece now. And I thought that was the best way, you know, the acceptance of that it happened. We're never going to get to perfection and say, okay, we don't have anything more to worry about. The more you face it head on, the better off you'll be in the